Welcome back to more YouTube. Today's video is going to be based on how to speedrun Super Mario Brothers 3. I'm actually getting to the point where I don't want to say I'm sick and tired of people giving up on speedrunning Mario 3 because of this number one main problem that happens to a lot of people who have quit this game and it has to do with almost the beginning of learning to speedrun this game which is pretty depressing. You want people to enjoy the beauty of running Mario Brothers 3 and not feel like RNG or skill is like blocking them all that much. So we're just gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna give you guys an in-depth understanding and teach you exactly how to approach speedrunning as a whole and tie it in with Super Mario Brothers 3. This isn't going to be entirely all about Mario 3, but it's going to be how you approach speedrunning and you can utilize this tool for speedrunning any game you want. It's it's really all about how you approach it. So let's use Mario 3 and jump right in. So here we are, we have our Mario 3. We're playing on our practice ROM, which for anyone who needs this, I'm going to make sure that I put in the description below like uh, where you can get your practice ROM, the Discord link, uh, the leaderboard link, all that stuff, because I think a lot of people miss out on being able to grab good tools to utilize getting good and speedrunning Mario 3. But that's not what it's all about. We're gonna start here in World 1. Boom, we're, we're here in World 1. Now, this is honestly one of the biggest problems when learning how to speedrun any game is that a lot of runners think, start with 1-1 one, one, and we'll go from there. When I learn 1-1, one, one, I'm gonna go to 1-2. One, one of the biggest problems with Mario 3 is that World 1 is actually one of the more harder worlds in the entire run. World 1 is very difficult. You have orb jump, you have Getting your P speed, like let's just let's just slow walk in this level and take a quick look. So first and foremost, you get early P speed, which is pretty difficult. You need some kind of understanding on how the P meter works, and you're not going to develop that just by learning one one. The next thing you have is a very tight duck jump in this little pocket right here, and then you have that duck jump over the orb. Some people say, you know, don't go for the duck jump, just kind of do like a turn back like that, and then you can run past. But even so, if you want to copy what other runners do. You have to do the duck jump, the leaf grab, and then the jump up. That is a very difficult trick to grab, to do the, the flying jump and then going back up. That is a very, very difficult trick to do. And that's not something you want to do. So as we go back into world one, there is another difficult trick, and that is getting the P speed in the top of, in the top of one six. One of the reasons why getting P speed here is very difficult is because when the game decides to check if you're running on the ground to build your P meter arrow, if it does it while you run over this little pocket, it won't actually build up. So a lot of people are gonna be frustrated and struggle because they're gonna be trying to run. And as you can see, I didn't even get P speed there because I didn't jump perfectly and then it's really annoying and I can't copy the other runners and I get frustrated and I wanna stop speed running. I'm not enjoying it, right? Now there is one trick you can do where you can full big jump from this line right here. And it's a perfect full big jump that gets you right on this spot right here. And then you try and run as much as you can and then you want a small jump right here. I will do one quick demonstration before we get into the heart of why speedrunning this game is really struggling. And as you can see, I got it very fast. It just so happens to line up with when you run over the hole, the game doesn't check for your P meter at that specific point. Here we go. So you're approaching speedrunning for the first time. You're super excited. All right, so you're in 1-1, not so bad. You hit the block. I mean, you can pipe rub. Pipe rub's not a big deal. You're learning how to speedrun. You're not used to it. You're not in you're not incredibly used to Mario 3 and how it controls right now. So you're just, you're just kind of starting out. You notice in the record that they hit the block. So you copy them, you hit the block. Everything's good. Yeah, you ha you're having struggle. You're struggling getting over the turn back, right? Because you, you don't fully understand how it works. So you do the pipe rub, easy, and then all the jumps from here on out are very, very easy. Lots of people can do 1-1. One, one. Lots of people can do 1-1. One, one. It's, it's honestly one of the easier levels in the entire game, especially if you do the pipe rub, right? If you do the pipe rub, it's just always pretty much free. But this isn't where the problem is. It's as soon as they decide, well, I did 1-1, one, one, so now I gotta learn 1-2. And that is a very big problem. There's an issue with 1-2 that's known amongst the speedrunners and a lot of people who run this game, but not to people who are trying to learn how to play this game. And the problem is, is that getting the right speed on these hills is kind of sub-pixel based. Now sub-pixels are the smaller than pixels movement, we've talked about that lots before, without going into any detail. 
my coin count right now is showing my sub pixels and you can see that they cycle from 0 to 15 blah 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 like how like you can't even see them when you're playing the game so knowing and understanding them for this level is useless but the reason you're not getting P speed in this level is because you see that right there I did exactly what you see in runs and I didn't build my P meter and that's because I had a bad sub pixel and that is one of the biggest issues if you start the level with a sub pixel of 0 you see that I didn't get it I mean, I might be able to get it with this subpixel. All depends on how I run. Yeah, see? So now I ran perfectly and I did it, right? But that is the problem. People will get to level two. They, they think it's easy, right? You think it's easy. Oh, you just run up the hills and jump. I can do that. But not if you beat 1-1 one, one with a bad subpixel. Then you won't get it. And you get very, very discouraged. And that is one of the biggest problems with learning how to speedrun Mario 3. Now, if you're learning to speedrun Mario 3, and this is kind of discouraging you, but you want to go from level one and work your way throughout the whole game, then just ignore, just ignore this P-Speed here. Just go up on the pipe, jump on here, you can jump down, and build your P-Speed right here, from this point. You're gonna want to land as early as you can, like up here somewhere. If you do like a big jump, it's gonna be kind of struggling, but you'll still get it. Get your P-Speed there. Don't worry about the hills at the start. The hills at the start is when you gathered a lot of understanding of how this game works and once you get really comfortable, okay? Now that we got that out of the way, I want you to think about right now, what is your favorite world? What do you like most about Mario 3? What draws you to Mario 3? Is it P-Speed in 1-2? Maybe, but probably not, alright? Mine was World 4. Hey everyone, I got some pretty cool news. I just got this dope sponsorship with HelloFresh. If you click the link in the description below, you can get 50% off your first meal. That's actually pretty dope and it would really help support me. So thank you very much. I loved World 4 when I was a kid. There was something about World 4 that I just liked. So I went straight to World 4 when I was learning how to speedrun this game. And this was actually one of the first worlds that I learned to speedrun. There wasn't anything left for me to do, so... You know, I was just moving around and I will provide this practice ROM in the description below. Don't worry, you'll be able to get it yourself. I can't provide the actual ROM of it, but I can provide you in the direction where you can get your own resources. So, you get to, you get to 4-1 and you try and copy the speed run. And let's say you want to grab the shell and do the speed this way. Well, there you go. Then, like, that's not so, that's way easier than 1-2, right? And next thing you know, you have one level under your belt. You've done 1-1, one, one, you're good at that. And you're done, you did 4-1, you're good at 4-1. You know, and, and once you once you finish up 4-1, you, you'll realize how, how comfortable you're starting to get with, with controlling Mario 3. And another good spot to learn how to control Mario 3 with P-Speed without any consequences is 4-3. If anyone asks me, I always say 4-3 is a perfect level to kind of get a good feel and understanding of the P-Meter. So if you have a Fire Flower or whatever, you can shoot these two guys here. And now you can kind of turn back and forth and understand the rhythm of keeping P-Speed. You move back and forth, you can learn how to jump and do full big jumps, and you can learn how to jump from here to there. And you can learn how when you run into the wall, how you see how my P-Meter stopped, right? So you, you need to learn how to run into the wall and understand why you lost P-Meter there, and you need to learn to understand how to keep your P-Meter when you rub up against the wall. This level is perfect for that. This level will teach you how to do the turn back on the walls without accidentally entering the pipe. You see that? You can see that I'm rubbing up against the pipe, but I'm not going in it. And that's because I'm timing it right to, you know, not go in the pipe. You can learn how to jump up here, do a turn back, maybe, maybe do some backwards jumps, maybe do some duck jumps, learn how to keep P-Speed with the opposite direction. There's just so many things that you can do in this little area that really helps you understand P-Meter. And that's really the ticket, because if you're gonna learn how to speed around this game, you have to learn how to understand the P-Meter, because a lot of the tricks are gonna be very difficult. Right? So now that you're in World 4, or maybe you have Fire Flower here, you watch the speed run, and you see, oh, they shoot right at the start. Easy. Way easier than 1-2. You shoot right at the start of the level. I, I, I time my shot with this line on the bush right here. Right here. You see that, you see that arc line right there? Not, not this circular arc, not that one, but this one. This one right here with the arc. When I line Mario's head up, that's where I decide to shoot the fireball. So when Mario, boom, I shoot right there. There you go. And then from there, when you make a simple jump, which I know a lot of you know how to do, jump over this guy, you do a full big jump, you're already there. Super, super easy, okay? 
You do a jump, then you do full big jump, and then you could run off of- you can run off the ledge if you want. You don't even have to jump. The only reason speedrunners jump there is because it creates lag. Watch. See all that lag I created? You could hear it with the P meter kind of chugging a little bit there. So when you do your jump, I decide to do like a duck jump. And you have to watch out because the back of the turtle will nick you if you don't run far enough on the block. Right? So it's much easier. And then do a duck jump and... You need to learn as well that running off of anything that's two tiles high, you'll preserve your P-speed. It's okay, you don't have to avoid it. It's a simple runoff, you won't lose speed. That's why I can land on the green pipe and just run off of it. Except, you know, I didn't land on it there. You can let you can over jump it too, it's not a big deal. That's the beauty of Mario 3. There's so much open stuff. You see, you see how I ran off it and everything was okay? I didn't have to worry about it. I had to do this awkward jump right there, but if I land over, I'm ready to jump, you know, in... I don't know, I, I guess I could say in your own manner or, or whenever you feel comfortable, but it's not so bad. The entire point of what I'm trying to express is that speedrunning is about enjoying it and learning to understand the game, not just simply watching a speedrun and copying it. That is the complete opposite of how you want to approach a speedrun. Let's say, let's say World 3 is your favorite world, right? Now, if you approach speedrunning the way a lot of people do it and fail, by just starting at the first world and working your way up, you'll never reach World 3, which means you'll never truly know how easy 3-1 is. You don't even have to do anything in 3-1, and that's one level under your belt already, right? So let's say you went to World 4, you learned like three or four of those levels, well now you have three or four levels. Then you're like, well I like World 3, so then you come to World 3 and you realize, oh, the first level in World 3 is very easy. I could just go on the top, run, jump, even if I fail, like, sure I could walk here. You're not gonna get punished, and it's not gonna be that big of a deal, right? Next thing you know, you have like four or five levels under your belt. As opposed to the person who got stuck in 1-2 for a week. And they still don't understand it because they didn't understand exactly how the P-meter works. You already have like months of advantage over people who start from the beginning and progressively work their way up. That's not gonna work. Right? Now, 3-2 is a very difficult level for speedrunners, but for non-speedrunners, all you do is just time your jumps. I mean, you can get this star right here. You can start the platform if you want. It, you don't have to perfectly copy the world record holders and the world record speedrunners. Right? You got your fireball. Look at this. This is gonna lose you a lot of time, but wouldn't it be nice for you to be able to comfortably get through all the worlds and get like a one hour and two minute first? rather than spend a month on World 1. I mean, World 1 is so difficult, right? Let's take if you like uh, World 5, for example, you have a Fire Flower. Well, by the time you get here in a run, you'll probably have an extra star. So let's see what this level's like if you just use a star and you don't have to worry about anything. Look, I even messed up some of my jumps. No big deal. Look, I'm doing a whole bunch of turnbacks. No big deal, right? You gotta watch out for these guys. You can take it slow here because you know the world record holder falls here, but you know, you take it slow and you can shoot and then you're good to go. Yeah, for the most part, you see you see the world record holders, they hold right and they cause it's because they use a visual cue of that first Koopa that you see. When you when you pass by that Koopa, that's when you hold left and then instantly press right. You hold right and then you hold left and then it just it just lines you up. But but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You, you think you do because you're just trying to copy the world record hold, but you can just hold right and then hold right and land on this guy, and then land on that guy, or just simply go. Not everything has to be extremely complicated that the world record holders use or the top runners. It's just making things very difficult for you, right? You land on the Koopa, land on that. So what? You lost a second compared to the best players in the world, right? The idea is to learn the game, not, not push yourself and force yourself to understand things that you're not even ready to understand yet. They're, they're not even close. Like even in this area, right? Just build P speed, run around for a bit, have some fun. Yeah. Jump around, can you make it back up there? Try and try and test yourself. Can I keep P speed and keep it back up here? You know, go back to enjoying the game and playing it. Now, I feel bad for you if your favorite world is World 8, because unfortunately, if you're practicing, there's really not much you can do in World 8. I mean, you have to do the auto scrollers and the, the tanks and stuff, but you really don't have to copy world record holders if you're going to be doing the, the tank and Navy. You don't have to worry about that stuff. So yeah, in conclusion, without going into any crazy detail, you have to 
you have to approach speedrunning with uh, with some sort of passion of enjoying the game and not just copying what other runners do and starting at the beginning of a game. And you can apply this. Take take an example for Mario 64. In, in if you don't do the backwards lobby jump in Mario 64, the first thing you're gonna do is the bomb's battlefield, and you're gonna have to learn to clip through the fence with the bomb. You don't have to do that. That that's. I don't want to say that's an advanced trick, but it's that trick's not easy. So if you first start running Mario 64 and that's the first thing you do, you're going to spend hours and days and weeks because you don't even have good fundamental control over Mario to begin with. And that's going to help you overall with tricks. And that's the same as Mario 3. To learn and get better at all of these tricks and become consistent, you just have to simply get good and have fun with the game and just learn to understand it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I desperately, desperately hope you guys learned something because I see this all the time. We would, the Mario 3 speedrunning community would have so many more people if they didn't follow the start at the beginning and work your way through the run and then give up at 1-2. 1-2 is the worst level. Just forget about getting early P speed in that level. Don't even worry about it. Aside from that, Fire up your NES, turn on your Mario 3, go to your favorite world, learn how to play with P-Speed, go to my description, try and get any practice utilizations that you can get and just have good fun. And I swear in like a week or two, you're gonna be P-Speed jumping all over the place. You're gonna be picking your favorite levels. You're gonna get really good at them. You're gonna start getting better at world one. Next thing you know, you're gonna have a sub one hour in warp list. You'll be able to beat the game all the time, maybe die only a couple times. Trust me, I swear it's gonna work for you. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope you have a good day. Woo!